Let's Stay the Night for Some Treats, A Fate Stay Night Story, Chapter 1, An Earthy Blend, Watery Wine and Tokyo T-Shirt. The hell? Why is Nao Claudius a Japanese cartoon woman? The teacher said to himself in an all-boys high school. He had tried to search pictures of that certain emperor in class to discuss him, but his feed was mostly anime and video game screenshots. The laughter of the students could be heard all around the classroom. Some of the otaku students started to discuss the Fate series with each other. Nauru is more of a book leg of Cyber. She is the real waifu of Saiyanite, one student said. What about Sakura, Rin, or Iliusville? Plus girls like Ryder, Caster, and Taiga are seriously underrated. The friend next to him said. Okay, okay, I get it. There is a lot of waifus in the Fate series. We only discuss day and night so far. The conversation was soon interrupted by another student who was looking out the window being too shocked to speak. The other students gathered around him looking outside. They soon saw why he was unable to talk. The sky had changed to be a seemingly endless room with figures big enough to appropriately fit in that room. Upon closer examination, it appeared that part of the sky was giving the impression that the whole world was in a cup. Not just that, but everyone in the class, no, the world, felt gooey kind of like they were in a liquid. They soon realized that they were no longer solid as well. It soon clicked in the heads of many that the world had become a drink. Shiro, the Great Holy Grail War is not something to be taken lightly. A woman said out loud. I know, Saber. I'll go train now. Shall I join you? No thanks. I would like to focus alone. Very well. The male had left the room, leaving a female to be by herself. She soon spotted a few items on a table that made her wonder how she did not notice him earlier. The items were a piece of candy in an expensive-looking wrapping, a glass of red wine, and an oversized t-shirt that read, I Heart Tokyo, with the name of the city being in Japanese, while the I was in English. There was one more item, being a blue cup of green tea with words, An Earthly Blend, inscribed on the cup. The tea interested her the most, as it has some sort of slightly different color green liquid inside, which was in the shape of the continents of Earth. Saber thought it was just a fancy detail, with the title of it being a play on its name. Unknown to her, it was actual continents for a parallel Earth. Next to the objects was a note that said, For Saber, Wren, and Sakura to share. Saber assumed it was from Amiya Shiru, but did not want to disturb him, so she would try some of them then. The worst she figured would happen would be her having to pay for some sort of refund. She figured out how to divide the objects in her head. The wine would go to Rin, while the candy would go to Sakura, as they each liked to enjoy the respective item the most out of them all. That would leave the tea for her while the three of them could take turns sharing the shirt. She put the piece of candy in her pocket the wine on the counter, and put on the t-shirt as she got ready to take the sip of what looked like a delicious cup of green tea. Thus began the unaware invasion of a parallel world being conquered by a similarly sized mouth. The liquid people had the world somehow kept an almost identical form as before. Living creatures could now go merge with other objects or people and unmerge at will. They could also go through whatever they want to go through. It was a unique and almost fun experience if it were not for the fact that they realized that their demise was fast approaching. This crisis only escalated when they saw the face of what appeared to be some sort of goddess. Unknown to them, she was as aware as those inhabitants and was not the one behind it all. The panic was more to an insane degree with the ones already familiar with this woman. They went through an existential crisis as what was once fictional has now become a reality. Did this prove the multiverse theory? Was the creator of the Fate series inspired by true events? 
and many more questions were in the minds of those that knew about her. Some were hesitant to report about this, as the panic could get worse, but they figured everyone had the right to know, as reports were soon made. Saber elegantly sat down and took a sip of her tea, as she felt the delicious flavor wash over her mouth. She kept the liquid in that same mouth for a bit of time as she enjoyed the taste of it all. The sword fighter eventually decided to swallow the drink as it fell gracefully down her throat into her belly. It would wait there to be digested just like anything else that was swallowed by this lady. She could not help but let out a small burp which made her slightly embarrassed but glad that she seemed to be alone at the moment. To her satisfaction, the woman was able to cover her mouth with her hand to drown out the sound. Doing this ensured that there would be close to no chance Sheru would not be able to hear it in the room he was currently in. She proceeded to wipe her hands off on her shirt as she went to the mirror to straighten out her hair. She did not see anything abnormal as she checked herself and her outfit she was wearing out. She then wanted something to do, so she decided to go out and get Ren. Saber left and soon returned with her friend as they chatted while consuming their gifted drinks. The green tea people panicked as they were sent into the maw of this world-devouring female, but it was useless as the cup was too tall for them to climb. Due to that fact, they were soon sent into the gullet of this creature and headed straight for the stomach and the horrific acid that it contained. It was the end for most of those inhabitants, but not for all of them. Some of the buildings and the civilians they contained were able to travel up out of the belly in a bubble that was caused by the Colossus burping. All of them in the bubble cheered as they had a victory that seemed impossible before, while the unlucky ones were digested. However, even that victory did not help much due to the bubble having popped when it hit the immense giantess's hand. Many of those survivors would soon land in the impossibly huge jungle that was her hair or the incredible vast fabric of her shirt, while the rest were stuck to her hand to live out their remaining days, either there or wherever they got unstuck on. Even the ones that could see the mirror could not notice themselves as they were utterly insignificant compared to everything else in the room. The rest of the T-human hybrids and their surroundings were soon swallowed as well until the cup seemed to be empty to the giant human that was holding it. She did not even bother to rinse it out as the soapy water of the dishwasher caused a reaction that destroyed the last ones in the cup. During all this was happening, the microscopic creatures that came to an end wondered about something. Sure, they were wondering about why or how this happening, but there was some other question that bothered them too. Where did all the bodies of water and what was inside go? The question crossed many of their minds as they all looked around the insanely big room. They would never have guessed that the glass of wine that they could see was where the bodies of water and its contents had gone. Those that were swimming, being on boats, or just standing in the water had undergone their own transformation into liquid. Similar to the green tea people, these wine people had become hybrids of a liquid and a human. They were incredibly similar to each other, besides being made into a different drink. Although the wine people were already in a liquid when it all changed, unlike the peculiar cup of tea, this glass of wine just appeared to be a normal beverage of alcohol, with nothing really standing out as those previously in the water and their surroundings changed into a red color that looked just like wine. Ren and Saber chatted about events like the Holy Grail Wars, with both the one that was going on and the ones that happened in the past were being discussed. Tosaka found it to be quite interesting that this was this servant had been summoned to fight in such two times in the same time period. The chance of that happening was extremely slim, but the amount of detail of the sword fighter story about the time period showed that what she was saying was the truth. They also talked a bit about Shiru and the gifts they assumed were from him. Rin needed a bit of convincing to not go disturb him and instead to enjoy her drink she was gifted. After that convincing was done by the wielder of the Excalibur to the other in the room, that certain master hesitantly took a sip of the wine. She quite liked the taste, even with her small sip, so she savored it in her mouth 
and soon drank from it again. She took sips at varying speeds as she seemed to almost take turns savoring it and consuming it quickly. She did this while the other female took sips of her own beverage, and she chatted. They did this for a little while until Sabre went to go put her cup to wash as she was finished and then soon returned to chat with Wren. The wine creature stared up at their impossibly big new owner and her friend as they chatted away. The more intelligent ones wondered if the cup of tea were others who had been transformed into a liquid. They were unknowingly right about this, as they came to a similar conclusion of the green tea people. However, like their minds had been altered, they did not panic or pray in this hopeless situation like one might think they would do. Instead, they went and whine about it. It was as if whoever put them in this situation had a morbid sense of humor, as this possible deity made their fate be a pun on their new name. The wine creatures of all kinds collectively whined about what was going on, even though they still knew whining would be of no help at all. They just kept on complaining as they were soon swallowed up at different speeds and ways. They eventually all met one of two endings. Either they were digested to be destroyed or be washed away and eventually eradicated by the same liquid they were previously in, known as water. Huge transformations that ended up in this room did not all result in beverages. A lesser but still large one had occurred as another universe was affected. It was a version of Earth that had one of their cities go missing and end up small in this room. That city became the I Heart Tokyo t-shirt that Saber was currently wearing, and the city in question was, of course, Tokyo. It is ironic that a woman who wore a shirt talking about her love for a place was torturing that same place by wearing the shirt. The creatures that were in that city had their bodies turned into fabric and placed into their own part of that piece of clothing. They would also spend the rest of their lives as something completely different and seem insignificant. However, at least they would not meet such quick ends like the other beings that were transformed. In fact, after their initial panic, complaining, and prayer was over, they started to enjoy their new existence to an extent. Sure, it was not the best as they could not move, but they could still communicate with each other somehow and were only in pain when something like the pressure from a person or object was on them. They even could see the tinier people and surroundings that had become tea when they landed on the shirt they had become. Ren and Sabre continued to chat after they finished their drinks and put them to clean. The master in the room was intrigued by the new shirt she saw, so she nervously felt the comfy fibers on it after she had the go-ahead from the sword fighter. After feeling the smooth clothing, they resumed their conversation for a little while. Soon, the magic user wanted to go back home, so the other fighter went into a private room to change. When she returned, she handed her friend the shirt to try on herself after washing it and the piece of expensive candy to give to Sakura. She did put on the piece of clothing the next day after thoroughly washing it the day before. She proceeded to visit Secure sometime that day as they and Saber had started the tradition of taking turns wearing that t-shirt they got. This, of course, made Sakura the next one to wear the piece of clothing while taking the special candy to eat later. She was curious about what kind of treat it was she was going to eat as she almost felt bad to eat it at first, but then realized the purpose of candy was to be eaten. Shiru did later wonder out loud where they got that clothing, but they all just assumed it was a secret admirer. The t-shirt people went about their lives with what was the new normal and occasionally a bit of pain to come with it. They hated the times they had to get washed, but sometimes they thought it was worth it to get rid of the stains that harmed them. Their owners changed quickly at first, but eventually they would take turns sticking with one of three different ones. That would change every so bit as they got used to how each of the giantesses handled their home in their own ways. Eventually, their lives came to an end when there was a moderately sized rip, so they met a fiery demise. There was still the piece of candy left and more possible gifts to arrive, but the real question was what they would be and who would have them. Remember to like, comment and subscribe to get more of what you love. Be sure to check out Questathana on other websites. Like their DeviantArt to see all their juicy content. Giantess World for their easy to access stories. Their Twitter for some thoughts, role playing and special events. And their discords.